Welcome back to Better Than Before. I'm your host, Tony Richards. Excited today because Sarah Sear is here with us. And uh, Sarah is a food wellness uh, life coach. I'm excited to get to talk to her because she's going to give us some education in all sorts of things like wine and food and healthy choices. Sarah, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Tony, for having me. Thanks for coming over and rescuing us and (laughs) telling us all this great stuff. I knew you were coming today, so I had a salad for lunch and an apple and some Greek triple zero yogurt and a big old water because I knew you were going to be on the show. Did you think I was going to ask you what you ate for lunch? No, but I didn't want to have Big (laughs) Mac breath or anything, you know, so I didn't want you to get in trouble with, with you. So you hear all the time about you got to make good choices. You got to make healthy choices. So can you expound on that just a tad for me and tell me what that really means? Okay. Well, no matter whether I'm like teaching a class or doing it with an individual consultation, it really depends on two main things. Making good food choices are really about an individual concept of like what's best for you physically. What's the best diet for you to where you have enough fuel for your day? What's the best eating protocol that works best for your body? What's the best eating window for your schedule? And then the second part of that is where are you mentally or emotionally? Where you, Are you where you need to be to get the results you want? Are you motivated versus being frustrated? Are you gaining confidence versus, let's say, like shaming yourself through it? Hmm. So I'll just be transparent here for a second. So I, I think I have a, um, I, I know where the root of some of my unhealthy choices come from. And it comes from growing up in a family where we were very uh, modest and meager in means. But my grandmother and my mother always said, but we are going to have food and we're going to eat. And in the South, eating well does not, we are not talking about what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Because eating in the South, that is uh, that is uh, fat and grease and baking and our our uh, other food group called cornmeal, right? And so I I sometimes get into that habit of I'm I'm reminiscing. I wish I had that, and boom, off to somewhere I go to get you know some cornbread and some you know, something to go with it, fried fish or something, right? Instead of eating fish the right way, (laughs) which in your world, I'm going to say the right way. Um, So how do people break those cycles? Do you have advice for that? Yeah, you really have to dive into where that starts, just like what you were saying. So the nostalgia of that for you. So the idea is that your thoughts about it are really driving your feelings, and those feelings are really what are causing you to go out and take the action that you're taking the action to do, which is eat poorly or to eat whatever you want to bring back the nostalgia or eat to bring you comfort or eat to help you relax or whatever it is. Stress relief. Exactly. And and then looking at, is that getting you the results that you want? Mm-hmm. And if it's not, then we have to really look at the thought of, um, this well, since, is, since you are what you eat, no, it's not getting me the results I want, right? Yeah. So then we would have to really look at that thought and figure out where it came from and what it really means to you. All right. So tell me, how do you, I mean, I described some of those because uh, I've been thinking about it for years, but just for our listeners out there, what would just generic flatline poor choices be, right? How do you define that? Okay. So I define it with overeating and what the definition of overeating is. Okay. So um, overeating is when you eat foods that are not fuel. So fuel is everything that's bringing you all the nutrients that you want. And it doesn't necessarily have to just be like a salad, right? It can be like a nutritionally dense food. It can be whole grains. It can be fish. It can be tons of fruits and vegetables. But nutritionally dense food is your fuel. So if you're eating foods that are not fuel and also you eat more food than your body actually needs. So you could be eating really healthy, but let's say you're eating all the time. Well, then you're eating more than your body needs. So those are the two things that are showing you that you're overeating. If you're eating things that are not fuel and you're eating more than your body needs and people know when they're overeating because then they're not in the body that they want to be and they don't feel good. And that's pretty much how you know. Do people generally know what causes it, where it starts? I mean, I think people know that they overeat or they eat, make poor food choices. Um, 
they just don't know like how to stop it. They don't know why they're doing it. They get into this, the rut of it. They want to reward themselves. They want to comfort themselves. They want to feel good, de-stress, deal with their day, whatever it is that we just, we naturally just do that. That's how we've just kind of always done it. Yeah. And it's really hard to get out of that. What about, uh, I, here's, here's a scenario that makes it hard to get out of that. So, man, we're going to get together this weekend. We've got 12 or 15 of our closest buddies and friends and family, and we're going to cook out, and we're going to, you, you know what we're going to do. We're going to drink a lot. We're going to eat a lot, right? Right. And so that whole context of uh, that community, whatever you want to call that community, is driving that event which we associate with being good, right? So what advice do you have people? I mean, can they still go to something like that uh, and and fight off the peer pressure and all that? Or, I mean, I'm sure that's difficult. Yeah, it's so difficult. We, we celebrate with food all the time, and we want to celebrate. Celebrating is really fun. Um, but it's really about looking at those events and questioning the idea of, do you have to overeat to go and enjoy those foods and have a good time with your friends and family? Do you have to overeat or do you have to just eat one thing? Do you have to just eat the barbecue? Can you also eat a little bit of barbecue and a bunch of vegetables and some salad? And can you have some fruit and feel really good and still celebrate? Like, Mm. can you question the whole idea of we have to overeat, overconsume together to connect? Mm. So what does over desire mean? Yeah, so over desire is a big one. Um, there's kind of two things that cause overeating. And the first one's when your hormones are out of whack. And that happens when your um your blood sugar's off, like your insulin's off or your ghrelin's off or your leptin's off, which controls or tells you um not only keeps your blood sugar level, but also and when you're too full or when, or when you're, when you are full and when you are hungry. So if those hormones are out of whack and you can't know or feel f- when you are full and you can't also, um, know when you are appropriately hungry, then that's just like, that's pretty much most of us. Like when you eat things that are highly processed and high in flour and sugar and your blood sugar's off, then it's really hard to tell those, those hormones are off. Is that why a 15 or 14 year old boy can drink a gallon of milk? (laughs) Maybe, (laughs) maybe, but you know, just like go through five gallons of milk a week and all that. But it definitely, um, like a bowl of pasta, for example, you know, I've always noticed that you can eat more pasta than you really like you can eat. We can eat a lot of pasta because that spikes up your blood sugar and then insulin turns around and blocks the hormone that tells you that you're full. And both of those end up working against you to where you overeat pasta. Mm -hmm. And it's like really easy to overeat pasta. And that's why, because those hormones are so out of whack. What about like Chinese food? Same thing. Yeah. You can overeat that stuff pretty quick too. Yeah. Same thing. And Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's like the first reason is like your hormones are out. And the second reason is what you were asking me about, which is over desire. And that's not just about food. That's over consuming anything. Like we have over desire for things. We want to consume food and alcohol and shopping and social media and porn or Netflix, whatever it might be to feel better. And what we're doing is we're actually giving ourselves that rush of dopamine in our brain that makes you feel like you're doing something really awesome. And at the same time, you're avoiding what you don't want to feel, which is the stress of your day or something that's pissed you off or something that's, you know, really frustrating or you're just bored. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just boredom. So can you quit that or, or is that something you have to replace? So you have to, in order to deal with over desire, you have to learn to allow negative emotions, which is something that we really don't know how to do at all. Hmm. And negative emotions sounds like such a bad thing, right? Like you have to feel negative emotions, but it's really like we think we're supposed to be happy all the time. And when we're not happy, then it's like, what can I go to do to fix that? I can't fix that situation, so I'm going to go make myself happy by doing this or Mm -hmm. eating that. Mm -hmm. And so we constantly are fighting, feeling negative emotion because we think it's such a bad thing. But in actuality, the human experience is feeling both 50-50, feeling good and feeling bad. Sometimes we want to feel sad. Sometimes we want to feel mad. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the dopamine. So uh, most people, they want that dopamine rush, right? Is that a healthy thing? Do you have to find other things to give you the dopamine rush or can you live without the dopamine rush? So for each person, it's different, but finding that balance of a short-term pleasure where you get a dopamine rush 
and the balance that you get your long-term pleasure to be healthy or whatever that long-term pleasure is, Hmm. is different for everybody. So really like looking at, you know, you're doing it wrong when you give yourself short-term pleasures, you overconsume something and then you feel guilty about it. And then because you feel guilty about it, you overconsume something else or more of the same thing because you feel guilty and you're avoiding feeling guilty. Oh, so you're like in a doom loop then. You're totally in a doom loop. Uh Yeah. So what is just some practical things that people can do to avoid getting in this vicious cycle so practicing feeling urges and negative emotions are kind of where I start with people we've like first we develop kind of a healthy protocol or like what they want their diet to look like and I say diet it doesn't necessarily mean like restricting things it means like let's set up a meal plan that feels really good to you and then stick with it and it can be mostly what you're already eating, but maybe you want to switch up a few things here and there just to prove to yourself that you can do it and gain some confidence and stick with it and not give in to the urges to get off of it. And then practicing when you have those urges, which is like, it's like your prefrontal cortex versus your temper tantrum throwing child in your brain, mm-hmm. like your prefrontal cortex that plans in advance versus oh my God, I want that. I've had a bad day. I deserve it. I need that. I'm doing that. Yeah. Or I just had a big victory. Yeah. I just had something really awesome happen. Right? And I need to celebrate I need by... to celebrate by getting a DQ cone. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We, and we prog- that, program that in our kids at such a young age. Well, I was victorious today because, uh, you know, a lot of times you can just leave the office for lunch and go out and get in my car. And it's just so handy to go through the drive through yeah. at any one of fast food right Right. or I have to get out of my car I have to go into the store I have to get a cart I have to go get some salad or you know this that and the other and take it back to the office and it's really not that much different and it's not that hard but in your head you start thinking oh I don't have time for that right Right. That would be about switching your desire from what's fast and easy to what's maybe not quite as fast, but what makes you feel so much better and really like focusing on how to have over desire for something where you really want and making it actually way more and mean more to you. Yeah, I am convinced that the number one justifying statement we say to ourselves is I don't have time for that. Oh, yeah. Right. That's right. But we make time for all this other stuff. Right. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. I don't have time for that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. We hear that all the time. Sarah Sear has been our guest today, health, wellness, and diet coach. And thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I love talking about this stuff. Receive weekly coaching tips from Tony Richards, delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a CEO or an entrepreneur, Tony can help you reach your goals and give you a competitive edge within your industry. Tony's Monday Morning Coaching Memo covers topics ranging from leadership development to teamwork to company culture and more. Text the word leadership to 38470 to sign up for Tony's Monday Morning Coaching Memo or sign up online at clearvisiondevelopment.com.